Hey traders, it's Ryan here from theprivatebanker.com. I'm just going to do um, a quick update for uh, crude oil here and uh, just basically um, run through um, a purely higher time frame analysis perspective here. I mean, um, obviously, like I said, at the beginning of the week, I mean, we was leaning on uh, on balance on crude, even though there were some signs that um, we were potentially going to see a breakout here. But, I mean... Um, I think it's very disciplined to to stick with um, a hypothesis plan um, until proven otherwise. Because I mean, ninety percent of the time, um, the markets balance, and we don't see them trending breakouts. And um, obviously, it's vital to take the information um, as it comes in. But I mean, that's what we did this week. I mean, we we posted on on Twitter that. Um, after we took that first fade off the highs and we and we saw volume building higher, I mean, we just took a um, short risk off on the week and uh, we we're going to wait till next week to see where this market wants to go now because, I mean, it's obvious the way that the, the buy side order flow was, was coming in at these highs, um, that's obviously a sign that we were potentially going to gonna move higher here. So, um, I mean, I think, um, let me find the tweet on Twitter. Okay, so this is just our, our Twitter page. So, um, so last week, I mean, with the way that the market was moving up, so we put like a new hypothesis in play. We said hypo one, which was obviously the balance, which was the current theme of the market, and then obviously hypo two was changed. I mean, obviously there there was this clear sort of um, long liquidation here. Then we see these sort of responsive buyers coming in. We see sort of volume building higher on the year so far, anyway. But I mean, we are still showing balance on the market. So I mean, at this point, I mean, like I said the number one hypo was was the hypothesis was balance, and then we look for the change once it happens. So. Um, I'm just gonna find the tweet from last week. I just want to approve anything. I just wanted to show the the thought process here. So we said find the fair value so far in last week's value area high. Um, we already started to sell the week um, the weekly high um, on Monday too. I think this was Monday, and um, just kind of said whatever way we break this distribution bell curve is most likely going to be the next directional move. And obviously we broke it to the buy side. So then we put short risk off until next week on swings until we, um, it looks like to us like we need an inventory grab of 5450. We've, we've, we'll respond from there. So I mean, obviously we've seen the contract we, we've rolled now, but I mean we can see that the 5450 right here you can see the inventory grab all of the stops got hit and you can see that massive liquidation there um come into place i mean this is obviously some sort of um old inventory in the market with um with the stop run and inventory correction and obviously now we're looking for the new auction to unfold and we're looking for clues to see whether this buy side auction is going to be sustainable or whether it's not um obviously we kind of commented last week on the and the fundamentals on crude but I mean obviously commodities are very speculative and I don't normally lean on the fundamentals obviously but it's good to put the fundamentals into play with the technicals I mean people argue with me this all the time but I mean markets are technical by human nature I mean human humans come in they out they execute their trade and um, there are there is logic and there are there is a process to trade in so no matter what happens with the fundamental side of the world the way that the markets are traded are technical so anybody who wants to argue that is wrong because I mean like I said the markets are executed they're formed by engineers algorithms traders that have been doing this for years and there is a method to the madness and that is why they are technical by nature but obviously they are driven by some some fundamentals sometimes like like what we saw in crude last year but regardless the market the humans still came in and executed their trades and liquidated positions and did business every day from a technical perspective so that's why technical trading can be very very powerful if you have an edge and understand the the market and the way that the auctions are occurring anyway back to um the higher time frame analysis so i mean at the moment i'm just going to run through the current um the current breakdown and what we've seen on crude here so since we see um, uh, the flash crash in 2008, we had that uh, that balance, and then we saw a buy side at auction on fold, which I'll go into. We see that higher put in. Um, let's quickly check 2011, and since then we couldn't make a higher high, and we sort of saw a compression market. And obviously something has to give here, and um, obviously some fundamentals came into play here, and we just see this massive um, macro crash it was a huge long liquidation where the market just got too long and it had to be an inventory correction in the market and there was a price reset on the market from that perspective and if we look at that from um, 
a distribution perspective from time price opportunity we can see that this was the crash in 2008 I mean we, we, we went through this at the beginning of the year of our strategies that we had planned out for the year we had that um, sorry, wrong button here we had that lower balance um, after the crash which is potentially what we've seen here and then um, and then we saw the upside break and then obviously the upside break led to a buy side imbalance on the market for one two three sorry so for one two three four years we see that and as soon as we broke that one time in frame imbalance we see this huge liquidation in play and obviously the key factor was we couldn't put in these um, we couldn't put in any highs and we are still holding that 2008 range so obviously until we break below that hole below it which is obviously the first, below $30 a barrel um, then the expectation obviously on the longest time frame is to see rotations back up to this $150 a barrel area and obviously we just couldn't make it there so from the longest time frame perspective we see a um, we see that inventory correction on that time frame and, um, and now we're back to where we are now I mean, we held the the, the point of control of that lower balance here from 2008 and we again we see balance we see price acceptance so we see price expiration we see crash 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 until we found a buyer we found buyers now the price has come back into equilibrium we found two-way trade we found a fair price to do business at and um, and again like I said we've, we've been seen this two-way trade uh, balance now we're seeing a potential upside break so there's two things that we're going to look for now we're going to look for the upside break and we're going to look for buyer side uh, flow into the market and if, buy, if if buyers are interested here from an auction perspective and there's not um, and they meet sellers or they over demand sellers then we're going to hold these higher prices and we're going to see an inflow of buy side inventory into the market which means we're going to see these hold these higher prices we're going to see volume started to come in um, at these higher prices and I'll just show you a diagram that we did on um, Twitter earlier just to show the, the, the potential buy side um, uh, scenario that's going to play out here so we've seen this breakout now and we've seen that the market is still balanced but holding these higher prices so if we start to see volume build higher it's going to pull the average mean price higher and we're going to start to we, what we want to see is obviously it, it, it doesn't have to work out this way but this is just one way that we can see this happening is we hold higher prices we prove that there is um there is a buy side demand here with volume flow coming into the market that will then obviously make an, uh, create an Im imbalance on the year. Obviously, the development va value area skew will get pulled higher. Price can sort of pull back to it, and this is where we'll see the responsive buyers um, f and a potential upside breakout and a proof that there is a, a buy side demand in the market now. And um, so basically, if we do hold higher prices and we are seeing an upside break, what we don't want to see is prices come back into this price range. And again, like I said, we want to see volume building higher. We want to see the, uh, the development value area get pulled into price. And then we can see a potential buy side imbalance start until we find the next fairest price to do business at. And then we could see another balance and we could break back down or we could break higher. Obviously, that's just the way that the, the, the auctions unfold. I'm not going to go into that. But um, I'm just trying to explain the process here. So that is obviously one theory to come into play. The other next theory is, is we auction higher. There is no buy side demand here. Buyers are not um, attracted to this price, so they're not putting money into the market, which means it's not attracting volume. Volume dries up and we fall back into equilibrium and we see a two-way trade. So um, again, that would be the same on this on this sort of chart. So we're going to see the upside break. We're going to start to see volume build and we're going to pull back to the developer value where fair prices are and, and see a buy side response with new flow into the market and new auction unfolding. Or we're going to auction higher to these higher prices. Are we going to see that these higher prices are cutting off by them? We see volume dry up, and we see the market fall back into this lower balance. We basically see a, a, a basically a destination trade back to uh, just double check this is great back to about forty six dollars a barrel um, just at a glance. But um, I mean that's the current thought process here um, from a real macro time frame perspective. But like I said, the first. Who, who you can't tell when this was going when when this was going to break i mean so the market came up to the current high so the first thing we did i mean we obviously took some swings um long um some swings a lot, lot long on this market because the market came down and and we found a buyer from the edge of this distribution so i mean obviously the next sort of move for it to rotate to the other side of the curve and that's what exactly what it did and then we started to see an uptrend unfold and we and we tested the high of this um, of this current price range and this is where we look we start to look to fade the market looking for at least a pullback down to this uh, $47 a barrel and the, the first day it was great we see the selling come in selling come in and then we start to see a, a, a two-day balance come inside this range 
And the moment we put we poked below this this big engulfing bar, we held the range. What did we do? We see responsive buyers on the tape, and we see a rotation all the way back up to the high of this engulfing bar. And as soon as this happened, I mean, this was as clear as daylight that we were going to most probably break out higher, look for these stops, and this is exactly what we've done now. And obviously, now we've seen a new auction unfold, so we need to monitor the next the new auction. We're going to again see um, a buy side demand here, and we're going to see flow into this market. Um, with with an attractive price here for upside uh, expiration, or we're going to see again, like I said, volume dry out. Um, uh, no buyers really willing to pay these prices, and we're going to see the, f the prices fall back into to balance. So we're going to see a destination back trade back down to this sort of forty six dollars a barrel area. So um, that's just the current um, thought process on um, on crude at the minute, and there obviously were some key. Sorry, this is the the, the pound. Hold on. There were obviously some key. Um, elements which sort of gave us some clues that we were going to potentially see some um, some uh, some two-way trade or a change in the market because we we, we were one time frame down for one two three four five six seven eight eight months so this would have been the nine month of one time frame and obviously we came in this month and we broke the high of the one time frame and you can see all of the macro time frames are starting to liquidate their positions it looks like so again, now, like I said, the next thought process is whether we're going to see a dislocation here and see a buy side um, imbalance develop or whether we're going to find a, um, just dry out of buyers and we're going to find a seller and we're going to fall back into range and do two-way trade and, and potentially even move down lower to the sort of 30 area. So again, I'm not predicting, I'm not guessing, I'm just using pure market-generated information and an auction market theory logic um, to, to build a hypothesis. So... Um, so yeah, that's just where we're currently at with crude. I mean, let's just check out, check the weekly out, and you can see that we are, um, we are trying to break out here. And we're one time frame. I mean, we one time framed up to the higher. We had this nice sort of um, uh, candlestick wick here, and um, and we continue to one time frame. I mean, this is why I was kind of trying to lean to the sell side. I was expecting this to hold and then potentially come down, break this one time frame, and then auction back. But we didn't. We held the one time frame in, and now we've seen an upside break. We cleaned all the the weak inventory out, and we're um, and we're making uh, new highs on the year from the from the forward contract perspective. I mean, on the back adjusted uh, data, which I explained the other day. I mean, we are still um, we are still in the current uh, trading range on crude. I mean, from a I'm not going to go into that in great detail, but just it just confuses people. But I mean, um, so f but on the on the spot, I mean, we have broken out and we are finding new highs on the on the year currently. So I mean, at the moment, I'm just trying to track whether um, we're going to see some nice volume come in here or, or where the next curve's going to be coming in. I mean, strangely enough, I mean, it's it's Friday today and we still haven't fully rolled over to the front month. I mean, I've rolled over to the to the June contract, but we're still seeing a lot of volume being put in in the back month and that could be obviously due to people buying heavily here um, for, for delivery um, of that past month at that price. So that's just obviously one, one observation here. Um, Trying to think, is there anything else I can cover? So, I mean, we've got um, the yearly bars, and again, it's very, very similar to what we we're looking at with this holding this price range. This is the current range. So, when we found a buyer at this low, then we we're obviously we're looking for rotations to the higher the range, even though the, the candlestick doji is uh, in a sense a value area. It's the same thing here. I mean, we we came down, we've tested that uh, key key support here at forty four dollars a barrel, and we've come back into last year's range now. So. Now, if we do find buyers um, and holding inside range, then we just treat this as an inside year, and obviously, we're expecting um, reversions back to $100 a barrel, pretty much. I mean, there are sort of some key support levels here at 67s, and again, I'm not going to go into this in great great detail, but um, I mean, that's just the theory behind it. So, anyway, I'll uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'll do an update next time we. On, the, on this time frame the next time we see this sort of major change play obviously I'm doing this video because we are seeing a potentially major shift here um, in the marketplace we just have to um, again continue to monitor the the auction process and the, um, the new flow of um, orders into the market uh, any questions uh, do not hesitate to email me um, and uh, again you can just ask me on the forum um, Good luck and uh, catch you next week. Take care and goodbye.